Dr. Slick, so first of all, we would like to extend our word of apologies for the delay in this live telecast. It's all because of some technical issues in the studio. So nevertheless, good morning and Tashi Delek. My name is Tanzin Thargel and I'm an English teacher at Upper TCV School, Dharamsala. And I'm Denzin Chodun, the English mentor from Sambodha Tibetan Schools. And I'm sure you all are taking a very good care of yourself, your parents, and your studies. So today, before I start my first session, I would like to request Ketan Chula to say a few words about this program. Yes. Uh, actually, Gela is talking about uh, DOE's English Curriculum and Learning Standard Development Committee that constituted last year, that was constituted last year, I mean. We are a five-member committee uh, chaired by Mr. Dinsi Shimindobala from LA and our education colleague, Dr. Pema Yanchila, as the advisor. We also have Mr. Sring Thundrabla, the present Sambodha Tibetan School Society's director, as the member secretary, and we both as the committee members. So last year, we visited different Tibetan schools and interacted with the students of classes four to eight and their English language teachers. Not only this, we also interacted with the school principals. So based on our finding uh, and like observation of classes, so we drafted the English curriculum uh, and learning standard uh, framework uh, after around, I think, two, more than two months uh, in December last year to be implemented in all Tibetan schools. Okay, so you see uh, all your English teachers, uh, they are taking their online classes and your English teachers have so many which will length the syllabus to cover. So, Ketanchala and I will be not teaching the textual which is a part, okay? Now, we will be here teaching the general English language skills in the next uh, eight, weeks. eight weeks, yes, okay. Yes, so the live online English classes will be for eight weeks, and every Monday and Tuesday we will have four sessions of 30, minute, 30 to 45 minutes. So the target classes would be class five to eight, and we really hope that these online English classes will help you in developing your English language skills. Okay, so there is a COVID-19 pandemic all over the world, okay? So because of that, so many new changes have taken place and you are, instead of learning in a school, you are just learning online and we teachers are teaching online classes. So in fact, this has become a new normal in our life. So as far as I'm concerned, uh, I'm quite new to this, especially this new, what should I say, life teaching, okay? Yes, and, but I feel very honored and privileged to get this opportunity to, this, to do this live session, okay? So you see, whenever there is a new learning, what should I say, uh, environment, okay? Whenever you take a new challenge, uh, we tend to make mistakes, okay? So we, I mean, I may also make some mistake, uh, which are here and there, okay? So I would like to request all of you to forgive me, just like the, I forgive you when you make mistakes in this learning, which is a process, okay? Absolutely. I agree with you, Gela, and I am with you in this. After all, we are all humans. So though it would be a little difficult for us uh, because we won't be having face-to-face -face interaction like in a normal classroom setting, but we will definitely make an effort to make our classes more lively and effective. Okay, thank And thanks. so I won't be taking much time because Gedin Sagla is very excited to begin his <laughs> first session. So over to you, Gela. Okay, thank you, Gela. Okay. Now I'm going to start my first session, okay, yes? So you see, these are languages, what? Okay, there are so many languages in this world. Do you have any idea how many languages are there in this world, especially the spoken language? No, normally it's, what should I say, not that easy for us to know the 
languages properly. Well, but uh, according to some experts, uh, they said that they are roughly 6,000 to 7,000 spoken languages in this world. You got it? Okay. And not all these uh, spoken languages have written form. Okay? Yes. Yes. So you see language. Language has two parts, written and spoken. Okay? Yes. So I told you not all the languages have written, okay? Yes, M majority of the languages have spoken form. Now, if you look at uh, the Tibetan language, English language, and Hindi language, for example, okay? Yes, they both, they have both the written and spoken form, okay? Yes. Now, written and, now let us take an example, okay? Yes, teachers teach online class happily, okay? This is the sentence. This is a speech, okay? Yes, uh, it can be a written speech or it can be a spoken speech. If I speak that sentence, then it becomes a spoken form. And if I speak the, which I write this sentence, then it becomes the written form, okay? Yes. Now, what do you think is the difference between written and spoken form? Yes, any other? Yes. So. The written form is normally more, what should I say, practical, it's more formal, okay? Yes, you have to keep in mind so many structures, so many tenses, so many things, okay? So this is a written, spoken, which would I say, we used to have some kind of excuses, okay? Yes, now teachers teach online classes, okay? Now this is a sentence and this is a part of a speech. This is a speech, okay? Now, that particular speech has so many parts. That sentence is made up of different parts, okay? Yes. Now, what are these parts called? These parts are called parts of speech. You got it? Now, for example, let us take an example of a body, okay? This is my body, okay? And my body is made up of different parts. For example, hands, hat, legs, Okay, so many things. So like this, a sentence, a particular speech, a particular written speech is made up of different parts of speech. So do you know these are called parts of speech? For example, teacher, teach, online, classes, happily. This is a sentence and that sentence, that speech is made up of different parts. Okay, yes. So, uh, I want you to recollect, okay, you must have done the different parts of speech, okay, yes. So I want you to remember, what are the different parts of speech? You remember? Okay, so in English, there are eight parts of speech. There are eight parts of speech. I'm sure you have already done this, and if you have not done this, you are going to do this gradually, okay. So what are these eight parts of speech? We have the noun, we have the adjective, we have the pronoun, we have preposition, verb, adverb, conjunction, and interjection. Now these are the eight parts of speech. So whenever there is a sentence or there is a written speech, uh, it's important for you to have uh, which is some of these parts. I don't, uh, I'm not saying that uh, you should have all the parts, okay? But this sentence is made up of these parts. Okay, yes. Now let us take example of this same, uh, which is a sentence. Okay, teachers teach online classes happily. Okay, yes. Now I told you this is a speech, this is a written speech, and this written speech is made up of different parts. Okay, yes. Now uh, we know that there are eight parts of speech. Now I want you to uh, look at these sentence, look at these words, and try to identify, okay? Now, if you are able to identify, you just try to identify, okay? What is the name of, uh, uh, which is the part of speech used here, okay? Yes, teachers teach online classes 
happily. Okay, now since we are just starting from the basic, I want you to go through this and try to, if you are sitting with your sibling and if you are which are with your friends, you just uh, can have a discussion and then try to identify this. Yes? Any idea? Okay, yes. Now let us see. Teachers. Okay, teachers. Noun. This is noun. Teach. It's a verb. Online, it's adjective. Classes, again, noun. And happily, adverb. Now, these are the parts of, parts of speech. Yeah? Teachers teach online classes happily, you see. And this is made up of these parts of speech. What are these parts of speech? Noun, verb, adjective, uh, adverb. Now, these are parts of speech. So, you see, so our speech, our sentence is made up of a different parts of speech. So it's very important for you to know about the parts of speech. Okay, now let us take another example. I want you to look at this sentence and read this to yourself. Reading improves our mind quickly. Okay, so this must be quite different from the previous one. Previous one, it's easy. Okay, now this one, I try to, what should I say, give this example for the senior class. Okay, yes, and you will know this, why this sentence is meant for the senior class. Reading improves our mind quickly. Okay, yes, now these are the words, okay, used to make this sentence. So, once again, I want you to look at these words carefully and try to identify which part of speech is it. Reading improves our mind quickly. Ready? Okay, yes. So if you have written your answer, let us try to see whether where it is right, how many of you got it right. Okay. Yes. Okay. The first one, reading, it's now. Improves, it's verb. Our it's pronoun, mind again now, and quickly adverb. Now these are the parts of speech. You, which you have to keep in mind that reading improves our mind uh, quickly. This sentence is made up of these parts of speech: noun, verb, pronoun, adverb. Okay, yes. So uh, reading. Okay, in the first one and the in the first sentence. Okay, teachers. It's very easy. This is noun. But here I've used a reading, okay, yes. Now this is especially for the senior class. Reading is noun, but you may have some kind of confusion. Uh, you may go get some doubt, okay, reading, how come reading is noun? Reading is actually a verb. Now, what I want to say is now uh, uh, reading here, it's a gerund, okay. This may be a verb, but here it's taking the role of the noun. So what do you call such words? we call gerunds, okay? So the gerunds can also come in the beginning of the sentence. For example, reading, writing, smoking, uh, chatting, all these are nouns, okay? Yes, so sometimes noun uh, may also come in the verb form, okay? That is what I want you to understand. Now, did you get some idea about the parts of speech? Okay, a simple sentence is made up of different parts of speech. I've just given you the metaphor, for example, human body. Now, this is my body. Well, my, I cannot have a body without the different parts. Okay, hands and legs and hat, ear, nose. Now, these become part of my body. So, just like this, in one sentence, the sentence is made up of different parts. Okay, and these parts are called parts of speech. And in English, there are eight parts of speech, which you need to know. You got it? Okay, so let us move on to the next. Now, there are eight parts of speech. Okay, I'm not going to, what should I say, spend much time on this, uh, which is the part of speech. Okay, but just to give you some idea, okay? Yes, there may be senior student and uh, which is the junior student. Now, this session is supposed to be both the uh, which is section, okay? Now, if you are in the process of learning these parts of speech, uh, which is just a recapitulation, and uh, for those who have already done this, it's just a, what should I say, a reminder and just a review, okay? So, so let us quickly do all the uh, which are parts of speech, okay, with some examples, okay, yes. The first one is 
noun. Okay, yes. Now in one column I have written noun. Okay, what is the noun? The function, what is the function? The function of the noun is, it's to name. It's to name an animal, uh, which is a thing or a person and all these things. Okay, yes. And the position, uh, uh, which is a way does noun normally stay. Okay, what is the position of the noun? Okay, yes. Now I want you to look at these sentences and all these sentences. Okay, yes. Tibet is beautiful. I study English. We eat fruits. Compassion is very important. He is a teacher. Teaching is done in the class. Okay, yes. Now I just give you a few seconds to go through this and try to identify the noun. Okay, you can also uh, underline or anything. You can discuss with your friends or siblings. Yes, underline. It may be very easy. Yes. Just take a few seconds. Okay, now let us try to see how many you got correct. Okay, yes. Tibet is beautiful. So, Tibet, the word Tibet is noun. Okay, I'm not going to uh, go in detail about the different types. We will uh, which we'll know this later. I study English. English is noun. We eat fruits. Fruit is noun. Compassion, it's very important. Compassion is noun. He is a teacher. Teacher is again a noun. Teaching is done in the class. Okay, yes. So you see, uh, what should I say? Uh, these are the nouns in the sentence. You got it? Okay, yes. So it must be uh, quite easy for you. Now, uh, if you look at the position, okay, by studying so many noun sentences, you will just, instead of learning from things, you will get some idea uh, normally where the nouns stay. Okay, Tibet is beautiful. Tibet is in the beginning. I study English. English is in the and, okay, we eat fruit, compassion, beginning, uh, teacher, and teaching, beginning. So, after looking at this thing, at least you can say, okay, noun is uh, the name of a person or anything. In a sentence, noun normally uh, takes the place of a subject. So, Tibet is the subject. And it can also take place of the object. He is a teacher. Okay, so you will get some idea. Okay, so noun, what is noun? Okay, what is the function? And where does the noun stay? So whenever you come across one sentence, it's try to uh, would you identify the noun. Okay, yes. Now so, uh, th this one is the uh, second part of speech is verb, and we are going to do this in the next session. Okay, yes. Now the next one is adjectives. Okay, yes, adjective. What is the definition? Adjective, what is the main function? The function of adjective is to describe a noun. It modifies a noun, okay, yes. And uh, let us try to see the position, okay. Now when I say position, majority, I'm not talking about the specific, it's majority of the time, okay, most of the time, but sometimes there are some exceptions, okay. I want you to look at these sentences. You can also read. Tibet has beautiful animals. These books are mine. I have five teachers. Which song do you sing? My teacher is a Tibetan. Tashi's book is here. Okay, yes, I want you to identify the adjectives in these sentences. You just take your time. Okay, yes, now let us see. Tibet has beautiful animals. Beautiful is adjective. These books, these adjective. I have five teachers. Five is adjective. Which song do you sing? Which is adjective? My teacher is a Tibetan. Here you see two adjectives. Tashi's book is here. Now these are, uh, which are the red words are adjective. You have to identify. Okay? Yes. So animal, the word beautiful, it modifies animal, beautiful, ugly, small, like this. So the noun is, which is modified by the word adjective. Now if you look at the position, by looking at these sentences, you just try to tell me what is the position? Where does adjective normally uh, which would stay in the sentence? Okay, yes. So what I can say is adjective normally comes before a noun. Okay, beautiful animal, books, these books. Okay, yes. So the, now if you look at uh, what should I say, uh, the Tibetan language, okay, you just try to see where the adjective stay, okay. Uh, 
Jingmo Chimbo. Okay, Jingmo Chimbo. Mi Yakbo. Okay, adjective normally comes after the noun. Okay, yes. And if you look at the Hindi, Bara Atmi, Chota uh, uh, Desh. Okay, yes. So adjective comes before the noun, just like English. Okay, yes. Now, this everybody can do both the section. Okay, this adjective. But uh, for the senior uh, students, if you are interested, you can study more. You can go deeper and you will find that there are eight different adjectives. And by, uh, if you look at these sentences, I've tried to give some kind of idea about the adjectives here. For example, Tashi's book is here. This is actually uh, adjective. Now here, possessive, Tashi's means. So the, what kind of adjective is this? This is possessive, like this, okay? Yes, more. Okay, the next one is adverb, okay, yes. What is the function? It modifies, adjective modifies the noun and adverb modifies the verb, okay? And then let us try to look at the position, okay? Now, here, I want you to go through these sentences, you read this, and try to, while reading, try to identify the adverb here. We talk quietly. The students study interestingly. I leveling help my parents. Children stay indoor. Sometimes, we go to Riverside. I always change my bad habits. Okay, yes. Now these are the sentences. You take your time, try to identify. Some of you may be doing very quickly. Okay, now others you may take time, but please. Okay, I want you to identify this. Okay, yes. Now let us see. We talk very quietly. Okay, yes, very quietly, Eject, uh, I mean adverb. The students study interestingly. Okay, adverb. I lovingly help my parents, lovingly. Children stay indoor. Sometimes we go to Riverside. I always change my bad habits. The words which are in red, okay, now these are called adverb. Okay, yes. So let us try to, what should I say, look at the position. Okay, by looking at all these position, uh, which are sentences, can you make out what the position of adverb is in a sentence? Okay, yes. So, uh, which we say adverb normally, I say normally comes after the, which we say that uh, verb. Okay, talk very quietly, study interestingly, but sometimes there are some, uh, which are adverb always uh, sometimes comes in the beginning. For example, can you see? Yes, sometimes, okay, now this is adverb. Sometimes we go, it modifies the verb go, okay, yes. So adverb, okay, yes. Now uh, for the senior student, if you are interested, then how many types of adverbs are there? There are five different types of adverbs, okay, yes. If you look at these uh, sentences, I have just used some of the types of adverbs, okay, yes. Now let us move to the next. Okay, what is the next part of speech? Pronoun, okay, now what is the function of pronoun? Pronoun replace, uh, replaces a noun, okay, yes. And uh, what is the position? Okay, yes. Now let us uh, take an example, okay. I want you to look at these sentences, okay, and try to identify the pronoun used here. Dawa is a student, he is good. Momo is a food that is loved by all. I went to a place. It is in Delhi. Okay, now I want you to go through this and try to identify the pronoun. What is a pronoun? Pronoun replaces a noun. Okay, yes. So let us see. Okay, yes. Dawa is a student. He is good. Now he is pronoun. Why? Because the word he replaces the, which is a noun, Dawa. Momo is a food that is loved by all. So Momo is a noun that is pronoun. Why? That replaces word Momo. So Momo is good, Momo is loved. So again Momo. So instead of doing the repetition, the word that is there. I went to a place. It is in Delhi. Okay, yes. I went to a place. The place is in Delhi. So instead of using the place, we put the, the, that noun is replaced by Pronoun, okay, so you see the pronoun replaces, 
Okay, yes. Now, uh, what is the position? Okay, by looking at this thing, at least uh, we can say that the pronoun and the was a noun, the place remains same. Okay, okay, yes. Whenever we use, uh, whenever we have noun, we can use pronoun. So, pronoun can come in the uh, subject position and pronoun can also come in the uh, object position. You got it? Okay, now if you are interested, uh, there are four different types of pronouns. Okay, yes, for the higher classes, you can just go deeper. Now, if you look at these things, I, you, we, they. Now, which are, these are personal pronouns. Okay, yes, the personal pronoun can be divided into, I mean, basically four. In the uh, black part, these are all subject. Okay, because subject, these are subjective because the sentence starts with I, I play, you play, he play, so these are subject. My, your, all these blue, these are the possessive, okay? Something that you possess. For example, my country, your country, he spoke, our school, their class, okay? Yes, and the, uh, the one in the brown, this is objective. He give me, he gives me, uh, I give you, so these are object. And uh, the mind, okay, this is the other one, okay, the objective. Like. So this is about the pronoun. Okay, the next one is conjunction. Okay, so conjunction, what is a conjunction? Conjunction is the word which joins, it may be uh, words or it may join the phrases or it may also join sentences. Okay, and uh, after looking at these sentences, let us also try to see the position of the Conjunction. Okay, yes. So I want you to go through these sentences. Okay. I read and write every day. We love Delhi, but not the pollution. Wherever he goes, he carries a book. Neither Tom nor Mary is a Tibetan. So these are the sentences. I want you to identify the conjunction. You just take your time. Yes. Okay, let us see. I read and write every day. So the word and is a conjunction. We love Delhi, but not the pollution. Okay, but is conjunction. Wherever he goes, he carries a book. So wherever is a conjunction. Neither Tom nor Mary is a Tibetan. So all these, uh, which you see, the words which are highlighted in red, these are conjunction. So if you look at the first one, the first word it combines, it connects two words, okay? Read and write, okay? Yes. We love Delhi. If you look at this bird, the bird connects to, what should I say, a phrase. Phrase is a group of words, okay? Wherever he goes, he carries a book. Wherever is, again, a conjunction. Now here, uh, it connects the two different sentences. You got it? So a conjunction is a word which connects word, Conjunction is a word which connects phrase, and conjunction is a word which connects the sentence. Okay, so if you are interested, you can just uh, go in detail because in conjunction there are three different types of uh, conjunction. Okay, the first one are just the basic. Okay, and we have an acronym called uh, fanboys. F A N B O Y S. You see, F stands for for A and N, no, B, but, O, or, Y, yet, S, so. Okay, now these are the simple one. And then you, you go to the other two. Now this is about the, uh, what should I say, mm, the conjunction. And if you look at these sentences, you will just make out uh, the position of the conjunction. So since it connects, conjunction normally comes in the middle. Okay, now as I've told you, there are some exceptions. So sometimes it also comes in the beginning. You got it? Okay, yes. Now let us talk about the next part of speech, that is preposition. Okay, yes. So what is preposition? So preposition is a word which shows relation. Okay, relation of the noun, phrase, or sentence to the other uh, parts in a sentence. Okay, and uh, I, want also, uh, I want you to look at the position. Okay, so whenever we study these parts of speech, what do we do? First, let us try to uh, look at the function of these words and then the position. You got it? Now, these are the things. Okay, now I want you to look at these sentences. 
I am in the Tibet TV studio. The sun rises in the east and sets in the west. We started our lesson at 10 a.m. So unfortunately, we could not start today at 10, okay, because of some technical issue, because anything can happen in this world, and you should, what should I say, accept everything. So the last one, I got this book from them, okay? Yes, you go through these sentences and try to identify the preposition used in this sentence. Yes, preposition. Ready? Okay, let us see. I am in the Tibet TV studio, okay? In is there, the sun rises, in, sets in the west, okay, in. We started our lesson at 10, I got this book from here. So all these words are preposition because uh, which if you look at the first one, I am in the Tibet TV, this is a word, okay, yes. It connects the word, the sun rises in the east, and sets in the rest. So the preposition in makes relation, okay, uh, of the phrase, okay, we started our lesson at 10, okay, word, I got this book from here, them, okay. Now these are, uh, which is a preposition, okay, it shows a relation, I got this book, okay, them. So because of this word from, we make some relation, I got this book from them. So you see some kind of relation. Okay, yes. So for the senior student, if you are interested, there are how many types of uh, preposition? There are five different types of uh, preposition. Okay, now if you, you can also get some idea, I've just given you some examples, okay. First one is simple preposition, just uh, which is, and then uh, which is, we have double uh, preposition, compound, participle preposition, and finally we have phrase preposition. Now, okay, uh, the, uh, the lower classes, you can take example of this. And for the seniors, uh, which is a uh, student, we do the same preposition, but you can increase your volume. Okay, you can go deeper into it. Now, this is how we separate the, uh, which is say, uh, the classes. Okay, and the, la uh, the last one, okay, this is interjection. So what is interjection? Interjection is a word or a, uh, which is say, uh, it's a uh, group of words sometimes uh, which shows emotion and we have uh, we get different kind of emotions okay sometimes happy sometimes sad sometimes surprised like this so these are interjection now I want you to I'm not going to take much time here these are interjection uh, look at the sentences hoorah we did it okay ew that tastes bad ouch it hurts badly wow what a beautiful day alas we lost this great man I'm going home finally, yay, okay. Now do you see some kind of emotion? Okay, sometimes emotion is uh, happiness, hoorah, okay. Sometimes emotion is disgust, you didn't like, dislike, ow, okay. Sometimes, ouch, okay. Sometimes, uh, what should I say, sad, alas, okay, yes. Now these are the, now the position, if you look at this sentence, you can make out the position, okay. So most of the time, uh, we normally have interjection place in the beginning of the sentence, okay? But sometimes, yes, we have interjections uh, which place in the end of the sentence. So I, I tell you, there are so many exceptions. You got it? Okay, yes. Now let us try to recapitulate what we have done in this session, okay? Yes, we talked about English language. Okay, there are so many, around 6,000 to 7,000 spoken languages in this world and not all the languages have written form. Most of the languages have spoken form. Okay, yes. And uh, you have also, uh, which you studied the different time, which is the difference between the spoken and written. The written is more formal. Okay, spoken, we can have anything. Okay, so when, whenever we study written, we should study all the, which is structure and grammar, and there are so many things we have to keep in mind. Okay, and today in this first session, we have, uh, uh, which we recapitulated, we have just reviewed, okay, the parts of speech. And I told you, in English, there are eight parts of speech. Okay, yes. So this is what we have done uh, today. Okay, yes. Now, uh, before I leave, I want you to look at this sentence. Okay, yes. Doji studies with his sister because she is sick. Doji studies with his sister 
because she is sick. Now I want you to identify uh, the parts of speech. I've tried my best to uh, which will accommodate as many parts of uh, speech as I can in this sentence. Okay, so we have already done the eight parts of speech. I want you to uh, identify the eight parts of speech. Okay, yes. So I'm sure you will uh, which will try to identify this, the last sentence. Okay, Doji studies with his sister because she is sick. You got it? Okay, yes. So uh, I'm going to stop here, my first session, okay? And I will see you in the next.